Hi, my name is Jen, and I am the co-owner of the Formidable Genealogist Research Company, here today with a dose of Formidable Genealogy. I want to show you some ideas that maybe you haven't thought of that might help in your research. Today, I'm going to focus on farm locations. Any websites that I mention will also show up in the description for this video in the order that they appear. Let me share my screen. When we're working on projects for clients, they often ask us if we can find their ancestor's homestead and if the home is still standing. I'm going to walk you through how to do that using plat maps, like the lovely cover image of Ashtabula County, Ohio from 1856, census records and Google Maps. Obviously it doesn't work in every situation, but is quite successful for records in the Midwest. This is my great grandfather, John H. Jensen, who lived from 1875 until 1965. He was born just south of current day Sioux Falls near the town of Hudson, Dakota Territory to Norwegian immigrants. He married Agnes Paulson in 1897 and moved west to Homestead. I have this lovely photo of the family standing on their homestead. I know this is around 1911 because my grandma was born in 1910 and is a toddler in this photo. I know that he lived in this home for the rest of his life and that given his 1897 marriage date and the 1911 date of this photo, that he acquired this land sometime between those dates. First step is I look at the census in that time period and see where he lives. Censuses are available for free on FamilySearch if you do not have a paid subscription to any of the major genealogy websites. The censuses for 1900 through 1940 all state he lives in Goose Lake Township, Charles Mix County, South Dakota. So I feel good about starting to look for his land records in that township location. Before I start looking at plat maps, I'm going to see if I can find anything on the Bureau of Land Management website. This is a great first step because it will give you section numbers to look for on a busy plat map. I go out there and select South Dakota, Charles Mix County, enter his name and search. Two results come up and I click on the first one. It shows that the patent was issued to him July 3rd, 1902 for 40 acres in section 23. Be sure to click on the check mark under map and it will show you a general location of that parcel of land. If you click on the tab for patent image, it will often pull up a full page scan of an original document. Don't forget to check the related documents tab as well. It will pull up information about land near your ancestors' location who could be important people to your own research. Plus, it's interesting to see what year the land was surveyed and by whom. In this instance, it was surveyed by a William P. Dewey out of the Yankton Survey Office in 1875. You can even view a scan of his original survey, signed and dated by him. I checked the other record on the site with a date of 1904. Same range and township number, but section 19. So I have two locations to check on available plat maps. The website also states that the land was patented under two different land acts. The first under the Land Act of 1820 and the second under the Homestead Act of 1862. There is a timeline of US federal land acts at the website listed on the page. Our next step is to find some plat maps. Go out to one of my favorite websites, Historic Mapworks. Sometime when you have some extra time, do spend it on this site. You can find so many amazing maps in their collection. While you can find some plat maps in other places, I found this site to have the largest available database. I'll click on browse and then drill down through the map to find what I'm looking for. They have 33 maps for Charles Mix County, ranging from 1906 to 2007. I'm going to start with 1906 as that's the closest to the date I'm looking for. Lovely scanned images pop up and I look for Goose Lake Township. It seems that the township is broken into two separate plat maps for 1906, but wasn't distinguished as such on the census records. So I'll first try Goose Lake East. I zoom into section 19, which is the section listed on the Bureau of Land Management site for 1904. It also shows a little dot with an R next to it showing that this land has a residence on it. Be sure to look at the names of landowners near your own family. Oftentimes, they may also be relatives of yours or hail from the same hometown or village abroad. The name John Gleason sounded familiar to me, so I searched all of my scanned family photos 
and found two photos that the Jensen's had labeled on the back as neighbor John Gleason. Though not a relative of mine, he must have been a dear friend of my ancestors. The other section that John purchased in 1904 is section 23. It does not show up in East Goose Lake Township, so I open up West Goose Lake Township in the 1906 county maps. And there it is in section 23 and 24 of West Goose Lake Township, listed as James A. Jensen instead of John H. Jensen. At least it wasn't listed as Johnson as it often was for him. Don't get hung up on name variations and spellings. This land plot does not show that there is a residence on it. So I'll look at the next sequential plat map to see if that also still shows John's residence in section 19 of East Goose Lake Township. The next one available is for 1912. This one has both sides of Goose Lake Township in the same map. I look at section 19 and section 23 and again see the residence marked on section 19. So I know that's the homestead location that I'm looking for and that the other land must have just been farmland. From here, I'm also able to learn that my great grandfather named his farm Garden Valley Farm. To find the current location of Goose Lake Township, I simply go to Google Maps and type it in. I found that it shows up that easily most of the time. If it doesn't, you'll need to use the most recent plat maps you can find online in conjunction with Google Maps to find the location based on bodies of water, landmarks, and labeled roads. This one was nice and easy and is laid out just like the 1912 plat map I had just discovered. On the plat map, I see that John's section is three rows up from the bottom and six sections in from the left. I zoom in on that section and switch to satellite view. The satellite view clearly shows a residence in the same location of the section that the plat map listed as having a residence. Obviously, many of these homesteads are long gone but satellite images often still contain footprints of homes or clues to where they once stood. If you're lucky enough to have photos of the residents in question, compare the satellite images to the photos. In pulling up photos from 1918, the 1940s and 1954, I can see that the footprint, roof, and outbuildings appear to match my photos. Always check Google Street View to see if you can get an on the ground view. Unfortunately, this one is about one mile shy of reaching my great grandfather's home. It's right on the horizon on the right there, not quite close enough to see any buildings. I happened to be lucky enough to visit his farm in central South Dakota several years ago to take a then and now photo. The house was similar to its original shape, but had been remodeled in 1918. Even though my great grandparents hadn't lived there since the mid 1960s, there was still evidence of them like you often see on these old homesteads. The shelter belt was full of 1930s and 1940s cars that belonged to my great grandfather. And there was a wash house that was somehow sort of still standing. Peering inside, I saw my great grandmother's pie safe nearly intact, but no way to get it out without the building collapsing. Historic MapWorks has many recent plat maps as well. I highly encourage finding the most recent one to see who owns the farmstead and trying to get in contact with them. I've had great luck doing this through Facebook and old fashioned letter writing. People are often thrilled to find descendants of their home's owners and will happily answer questions and provide pictures. It adds such depth to your research to see the actual location where your family lived, celebrated and made their memories. It brings you closer to these snapshots of the past. I hope some of these ideas will help you to locate the places that were important to your family's rich and meaningful story. The Formidable Genealogist is a small family history research company consisting of two passionate and tenacious genealogists in the Midwest. In addition to research, we can also help people find their biological family through DNA, scan and digitally repair photos, slides, negatives and documents, and create personalized family tree artwork based off of 30 or more templates on our website. Happy searching.